everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and right over there is Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah? It's, yeah. Once it's again, been a long week. it has been a long week. It has been, a, I'm ready for it to be over. This was a hard week because last week was abbreviated. You know, with the end of the holidays, man, do I ever get into to holiday habit. It is so hard to get out of it. And and so this week was just like, do I even have the stamina to make it to Friday? Mm. Um, well, I'm taking half of Friday off. So so apparently you don't. Is that what? <laughs> I didn't quite make it. But how did you transition? Because I know that last last week you were talking about the transition being hard. This is your first full week. So did you feel like you got back into the group? Yeah, yeah, things? no, I did. I, I went back to my uh, to my daily, uh, the, the ideal daily calendar, and I kept that visible. Whenever I run out of steam, I just open that up and make sure I'm living to what my intention is. And, and if I'm not living to that and it feels bad, then I change the intention, you know? And so made some little tweaks to the ideal calendar. And uh, as it turns out, uh, I was living pretty close for this year and feeling pretty good about things. I, I, you know, usually when I'm, you know, when I'm really struggling, it's just a matter of, taking going back to rigor you know it's because i'm i'm slipping from the rigor of taking the work that i have to do and assigning time to do it i get lazy yeah. i get sloppy i fall off that way and as soon as i get back into it it everything's fine everything yeah. I, I i get back into the groove and and it's fine so um no it was it's all it's all good 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 well we we had a a loss in our little family oh i'm so sorry and so that's what's made it somewhat of a a hard week our little kitty cat who is um right around 20 years old oh. passed away on monday and so it really set off the week in a weird way because i knew what was going i knew i kind you know you just instinctively instinctively know kind of what's going to happen and then you take them to the vet and the whole family was there my daughter my son my husband and i and we made the decision and um you know it was obviously her time but it was hard i mean we've had that cat since 2000 oh and when we got her, when she adopted us, cause she was, um, she came to us in our backyard all of a sudden and just showed up and we went to all of our neighbors to find out, you know, if she belonged to anybody, um, they thought she was about two years old. So she was really close to being about 20, 20 years old. So, so that's why my week is really ready to just be over. Over. And, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's such a loss. And new, but yeah, it was sad. It was really sad, but, uh, it's yeah. helped to kind of work and kind of keep your mind off of it and, and all of that. I mean, that's all you can do. I mean, but, but you, it is like but a family support, member. Yeah. You've got to be there to support the family. I know how hard that is with the kids and yeah. it's just, a, it's challenging. So yeah, always kind of in the back of your mind, but, yeah. um, anyway, that's, that's me. So yeah, I'm, you know, a little somber, but that's okay. Okay. It's okay. I, I'm I'm at my stand up desk. I've got my water bottle that right. I showed on Facebook this I week. That. About this is like my favorite new thing, and uh, we're good to go. And the thing that's really cool about this show today is that uh, at the end, I'm going to share some of the feedback that I got from Facebook. Mm -hmm. So many people on Facebook were, were, were willing, I should say, um, to share their ideas of how they organize their information. So that was really fun to see. I love that. I love the list of, of comments and, and tools and tips. It's going to be a, a great conversation. Before we dive in to learning about how you organize information that you learn, uh, head over to Take Control ADHD, get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to the mailing list right there on the homepage and get an email with the latest episode each week. You can, of course, connect with us on Twitter or Facebook at Take Control ADHD, uh, but we'd love it if you would consider uh, heading over to patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast uh, and uh, join us over there. Uh, we've got, uh, we're, we're trying new things, but we've got a number of cool uh, tools, this live stream, uh, joining us for for the uh, uh, live stream every week when we record this uh, uh, podcast, uh, joining the, uh, taking control of the ADHD private group on Facebook, all of these things are now open to uh, everybody who supports us over on Patreon. So patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. Uh, we certainly appreciate your support there. So I think you got to probably clarify a little bit, right? Because that is a change 
from what we were doing. You know, before. that's a good point. Yeah. So that yeah. is a that is a change. We used to have it set. We we just really want everybody to be able to join us. That's the that's the real issue. We realized that that uh, yeah, having this sort of uh, arbitrary, you know membership fee sort of thing to access the the private group is is uh, th- that ends up being a lesson learned and what we really want is everybody to be able to join us so now um you know everybody who as soon as you join on patreon no matter what dollar value a buck five bucks ten bucks whatever dollar value you will automatically get a link in the thank you that will send you over to the adhd uh, group uh, to join us there. And you'll start getting notifications through your email via Patreon whenever we go live with a, a live stream like this and, um, and and hope you can join us. We hope people can start sort of making some time to join us uh, for a regular, you know, Friday morning coffee and and uh, podcast. So that's that's our idea. Uh, but there have been some great conversations uh, uh, in the ADHD private group. So hope folks can continue to join and participate there. I would also add another new thing. I think, did we talk about uh, the YouTube experience i don't think we did really last week we just sort of started it last week and it's kind of a work in progress but one of the things i have learned over the last uh several um weeks and months is that uh, more and more people are using youtube as their podcast client and they want to be able to subscribe to podcasts in youtube and so uh, shazam wish is my (laughs) command (laughs) <laughs> uh, it took me it took me a little while, but I finally got the entire back catalog of the ADHD podcast posted on YouTube. Of course, it's not video. It's just a still image of our our shining faces. But you can hear every episode of the back catalog. You can search for it there. They'll start showing up. You can subscribe to the to the channel there if you'd like to subscribe in YouTube and listen to us there. It's particularly be- uh, good for YouTube Red users. That's the that's YouTube subscription service where it, it gets rid of it absolves you of all ads. So you, oh, you right. have no YouTube ads. Uh, and it's really nice there because you can be listening, watching on your phone and then turn your phone off and it'll continue to play, you know, in the typical YouTube experience, if you turn your phone off, it stops playing if you're not mm-hmm. paying up. So it gives you background play, which is really nice. So if you're a YouTube uh, person, uh, please check us out over on YouTube. There you go. Okay. Now I think that's it. I think so. Sorry to nerd out. Uh, <laughs> Here we go. So we're talking about organizing information that you learn. Now, what? Is, give me the context. What exactly are you are you learning that you need to keep track of? <laughs> everything, everything <laughs> that we learn. How do we remember it? No, you know this. Actually, this topic came up last year um, when I did a survey and uh, to the newsletter, and I was asking people, like, you know, what what do they want us to talk about, and and um, you, you know all those questions that you asked Mm -hmm. on a survey, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And uh, one of the things that came up was how do I, how do I organize my strategies? How do I organize, you know, what I've learned? And that's always stuck with me because I've always myself had a difficult time, especially after like going to um, conferences, you know, you get so motivated and you're inspired and you've got all this great information. And then somehow it just sort of gets tucked into a drawer or a binder or file or whatever, and you never do anything with it. So it's always been sort of an issue for me. And then also just recently, I was reading through something. It was a book that I forgot I even had because it was in my iPad, right? So it's not a physical book. So I forgot I even had it. And I'm starting to read like the highlights that I had highlighted before and even the little notes that I wrote down on, you know, in in the or on the iPad. And uh, it was like reading it for the first time. I'm like, yeah, that was smart. I'm so glad I highlighted that. (laughs) What a nice present you just gave yourself. (laughs) haven't done anything with it. But so anyway, I thought, well, to kind of continue our conversation from last week, this would be a good way, you know, now we know what to look for with resources and maybe some things that that um, will help people. But how, how do you remember it? How do you organize that? So there's kind of five areas that I thought we could talk about. And then I also want to talk about the different um, suggestions that the the Facebook group had as well. The five areas that I'm looking at, is yes. when you're listening to a podcast, right? So you're listening to a podcast, you want to write something down that you've heard, but where do you write that down and, and what do you do with it? So that's kind of the challenge with that. Especially because what you're normally doing is you're probably in the car. You're in the car or like for me, I listen to podcasts when I'm when I'm cleaning the house or I'm doing like some kind of project. What do you do? Listening to a book, you know, how if you're doing an audio or you're listening to an audio book, kind of similar to the podcast, what do you do? How do you document that. And you're going to have to be the expert in that because I don't do audiobooks. So <laughs> I really have no advice on on that at all. Okay. Uh, read a book. 
um, you know, again, like I've highlighted, I've, I have these notes, but when do you go back to that book? Like, when do you go back to that information? Attending a conference, you know, again, so much information, so many notes, what do you do with them? And then really just in general, kind of all of the strategies and tips that you learn about ADHD and how do you keep that in order? So it could be a blog post that you read or a podcast or, um, a, I mean, it could be the combination of things, right? The combination of the book, the podcast, the conference, whatever. Um, Okay, so what I thought we would do is go through those categories and I would kind of share with you what I think and what I think might be a good idea or things that I do, but also want to hear from you as well. Okay. What do you think? I got I got thoughts. So with podcasts. Good a good place to start. I know, right? Yeah. They're listening to us right now as right. we speak. So what um how do you organize information that you hear on a podcast? This actually happens to me all the time. And it's one of the reasons I use the fantastic uh, uh podcast app Overcast, uh, because I, I just I, I find this particular tool useful. Um one of the things that I that I like so much about Overcast is the share, the the way the share option works. So I'm I'm walking, I'm on my afternoon walk and I I listen to something that's a, a useful tool. Uh I can actually bring up the share sheet and there's an option that says share at current time. So I can click share at current time. So maybe I'm a half hour into this podcast, and then I add it to my to-do list things. And it's it gives me a link that says, you know, overcast.fm slash code, 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 slash, and then a time, 3340 in the podcast I'm looking at right now on my phone. And I can actually enter using my voice, uh, you know, uh, review this note in this podcast about such and such a topic and then save it. And then I'll have it in my inbox when I go and review my my stuff. Well, isn't that clever? <laughs> So okay. <laughs> usually what happens is I never need to go back and listen to it again, right? Say it's right. A, new t a new product or something that somebody mentions on a podcast or a book I want to read or some resource. Usually the act of saving it alone and seeing it in my inbo inbox again, I'll remember right away, hey, that's a, that's a thing I, I remember thinking about. I'll go do that. And I don't need to go cl actually click the link, open the web, listen to that little segment again. I don't need right. to do that. But uh, sometimes I do, and sometimes I just like saving the list of links as as uh, you know as time code codes as part of a project I'm working on. And th in that case, I'll send it not to things, but I'll send it to Evernote, uh, where it'll join a, a, a project page that I'm I'm working on in particular as a resource there. So that's how I do it for podcasts. And I would encourage you if you're looking to duplicate this feature, if you're on iOS, check out Overcast. Uh, if you're not using Overcast, check out the share option on. Uh, any other podcast app that you use and see if it supports that sharing a current time uh, rather than just sharing the episode or sharing the show. And that's that's where where it falls down. Uh, sharing the current time is the real benefit uh, for saving this particular thing, this you know nugget that you want to keep forever and ever. Wow. Well, yours is much more technical and streamlined than mine. <laughs> mine is very old school. And part of that is because I don't listen necessarily to the podcast in the car because I don't do a lot of traveling. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, my car rides are like five to 10 minutes. So I don't typically listen to podcasts in the car, but I will when I'm doing cleaning and, and chores and stuff around the house. And what I do is I carry around a little notebook. <laughs> Look at that notebook. Yeah. 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 I carry around a little notebook as I'm cleaning. And if I have an idea, I put it down there on the notebook. And then what I do is if it's something that's really current that I really want to like do now or say like to, to suggest to you, cause you work with me on so many things. Um, I will actually then will put it into my to-do list, um, or like you all put it uh, manually into my Evernote yeah, with the yeah. project and say, okay, don't forget this idea. Or it's like a brainstorming type of page that I can put into there. So I will put it from paper into the computer. Um, and then I just cross it off on the notebook. And so when things are crossed off on the book notebook, I know I've already done something with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I get rid of the page and recycle it and right. move forward. Well, so. and you you will be surprised to hear I do exactly the same thing. And in fact, I have my little reporter's notebook here and uh, and you'll see like, uh, you know, whole pages of things that are crossed off. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's yep. that's also what I do. And it, it works very well if it particularly when I'm on a show like right now when we're actually recording a show. Right. Um, you know, I, I can't stop and use my voice and say, you know. 
hey, lady in the can, remind me to do this thing. You know, I, I can't do that. And that's so I have a notebook. I actually use a pen, surprising many people, I think. Uh, <laughs> you actually have a pen. I have a pen. It's lovely, too. It's silver. It's It was a gift. It has my name embossed on it. It's oh, beautiful. Oh, see, that's nice. Uh, anyhow, so I, I but, but I think that share sheet is a trick, particularly when you're driving, right? That is a right. really useful thing. You come up to a stoplight or you pull over, you're in the, you know, in a parking lot and you hear something great. You can hit that share sheet and save yourself a note without having to worry about switching apps or anything like that. That, that share sheet is huge. And you can share to Evernote. You can share to any app that supports the standard share sheet on iOS. So um, it's great. I use that to, to email people links to podcasts at time codes. You know, if there's something mm -hmm. I'm listening to, I think you'll benefit from, I can say, hey, click here and you'll go right to the point I want you to listen to, which is really Which useful. is nice on yeah. the recipient end because yeah. then you don't have to go through the whole thing. Huge. So what about audiobooks? Is it the same process with audiobooks? It is the same process with audiobooks. In this case, I'm using Audible, uh, the Audible app, uh, uh, audible.com. And I can, the, the share button, it's a little square with an arrow that comes out of the top of it. And and I don't even know if on the live stream you can see that. That's the standard share button, square with mm -hmm. an arrow that comes out yeah, on top right. of it. And once you do that, you can do this, this trick where you can send the book, you can share my pro progress, or you can share a link. It, it's, not as, it's not as useful as the, the standard uh, you know, tools. I can share a link to the book. I can also share a link to my progress. Generally, I'll share a link to my progress and add a, a clip or a, there's a, an add clip button where it'll save it like a virtual bookmark and you can jump right back to that point in time. So I'll share my progress and then save a bookmark in Audible and sharing my progress just saves a little note in, in things that says, hey, you've listened to 40% of this book, click here. And that's enough to remind me to go back into bookmarks when I'm processing my notes and do that. Um, so audiobooks are definitely you know more tricky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like I said last week, one of the things that I've been doing more and more with Audible in particular is paying a few extra bucks to get the book, right? The Kindle book. Right. Because both in iBooks and Kindle, um, you know, the act of highlighting and, it, you know, the way it saves to a notes page for, so I can mm -hmm. go back and review just my notes, the things that I thought were important as I was reading them. That's a really important thing for me. And so I need to be able to do See, that. See, me too. Yeah. 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 If, it, if it's important like that, I, I need to, to change to cross those mediums. So I, I think that's yeah. um, I, I think that's that's something to consider. It, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's it, it it's worth it if you're really studying something. Well, I agree. And that's that's kind of the, my point when I would go back, you know, last week, I'm looking at this book. I'm like, hey, look at that. What a great idea. You know, I need to to remember that. And it's because I can go back and look at what where I highlighted and what notes I had on there. And so, mm -hmm. um, no, I think that's a really good point. And, and like you said, especially if you're researching something, those are going to be more books about ADHD, business things that I'm going to want to put into my business. I'm not highlighting, you know, a fictional fiction book, book. Or right, right? Yeah. Um, well, and the fact is that 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 little share button again, the square with the arrow coming yeah. out of it, that little share button you can use from Kindle. So you can highlight something and then say share this note and send it to things or send it to Evernote so it can take part be a part of a project you're working on and it saves the thing and the quote, it saves a little credit to the book. Uh, so it's it's very useful to retrace your steps. I think that's the biggest thing I've learned today. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> because, uh, you know, I never really thought about sharing it into my email and then putting it into, you know, or whatever, going straight to, to Evernote. So I appreciate that, Pete. You are very welcome. I have learned... I've learned stuff today. That's good. I live so to serve. any other ideas that you have with like books, like regular books that you've, you know, gotten or bought at Barnes and Noble? And how do you go back to those books? I, I don't go back to those books. Yeah. In fact, I, honestly, and this makes me sound, I don't know. I don't mean it to sound bad, but books that, that I had that were paper books, honestly, I'll go to Kindle. If I, if it's an important yeah. book, I'll go to Kindle if I want to read it again and I'll buy it again. Yeah. And then I, you know, I, I actually have a little process. So this is one of the big complaints uh, that, you know, once you buy something on, on Amazon, it's locked into the Amazon ecosystem. There are ways to, to fix that. You know something. <laughs> I want a shelf of my books that I purchased that I can, that I have, that I don't need to yeah. worry about, you know, reading on a particular device. So there are, there are ways you can, you can find them yourself, but there are ways to, uh, you know, other miscreants and malcontents might search for things like, you know, strip DRM and, 
and I, I would never do that or host any of that of that kind of conversation. But there is a way to yeah. do it, and it's it's typically regarded as fair use because I'm not taking those and putting them on a public server somewhere for everybody to download. I'm storing them on my own system mm -hmm. so that I can reference them later and not be locked into a, a thing. That's that's typically thought of as fair use, but those laws are always fluctuating. So yeah, I don't like to talk about so it. So what about conferences? Uh, I'm a computer guy. You just do uh, everything in the computer. Everything's on the yeah. computer. Everything is either it starts as a note in good notes uh, or where I'm handwriting it with my Apple pencil. And then it transitions from there into uh, Evernote. If it's a conference I want to, to, you know, really think about, but I, my process for conferences is, uh, you know, I try to, to take notes during the conference that are appropriate. And then each night I go in and I recap it. Like, what did I learn today? What, is, what, yeah. what do I need to do to, to, to catalog that in my brain and in the projects I'm working on that are going to be useful for me, uh, for me and my clients? You know, what have I learned that's going to impact the projects I'm working on? So I really try to do that right when I'm learning it. And then I find I, I can search for it in Evernote just fine if I ever, you know, by topic, by keyword, uh, and, and so once I've gone through that process, I don't need to go back and, and look for it forever and ever. Amen. Um, you know, I'll find it if I need it, but generally I've internalized it enough by then that, that it's, uh, that it's pretty much stuck, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but that, yeah, processing quickly to the, to the event is, is huge. huge. Yeah. yeah, it really is. Well, and I noticed this last conference that I went to with Chad and Ada, what I would do is I would take notes and I, you know, I'm again, I'm old school when it comes to this. And part of it is because I don't have a laptop. I just have my iPad mm -hmm. and it's harder for me to type on the iPad than if I had a laptop. So you know what, maybe next year I'll, or this year I'll start thinking about that. But in any case, I would have, um, I would write the notes down and then I would have a highlighter for anything that I really wanted to remember. Like anything that was just, okay, this is really important. I would kind of highlight it so that when I did go back to process the information, it was highlighted. It was right there in front of me. But I think that's the key is trying to get the information, whether you're doing it by the computer or by hand, what are you going to do with it? How do you get it into your uh, workflow if it's important enough? But, um, you know, over the holiday, I did a huge purging project and got rid of so much paper that I had stored and filed away that was all ADHD related. So it was either past conferences or classes that I've taken, but anything that wasn't real current, because I had stuff from like 2011, 2012, I just got rid of all of it. I'm like, it's it's not current information. It's mm -hmm. all, you know, it, it, some of it still may be very rele relevant, but some of it may not be either. So that was a good thing to kind of just get rid of it and, yeah. and clear. You, you know, I would, I would add to your conference, you know, iPad typing dilemma. I would say one of the best things you could do for it is pick up a, you know, one of these Logitech slim keyboard cases uh -huh. uh, for going to conferences in particular, snap one of these keyboards on it and you'll be so much faster, so much more efficient, and you won't have that duplicate kind of data entry thing. You'll be able to actually yeah. you know, integrate it. There is, there is definitely a strong case to be made that handwriting notes and then going back and typing them into the system, the things you want to recall later is better for recall. And it's certainly better for, you know, for ADHD. If, if you have a system in place, a trusted system and, and you've got it by rote and you can, you can hyper-focus on that and do it. Uh, it's huge. I, I think that's a that's a challenge to to develop that. And so sometimes just getting it in the first time is is big. Well, I agree about the key key uh, board because um, my handwriting is so bad that sometimes I can't go back and read it anyway. And so at least you if have it's great handwriting, it's very flowery and big. Oh, it's awful. It's like a work of art. Everything oh, is very a swoopy. Work of art. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, no, I can't read it half of the time. So yeah, trade offs for next art conference. I'm getting the little keyboard thing yeah, or it's worth it. get a laptop. I don't yeah, know. We'll see yeah. where we are, but um, it's definitely an issue. I, that's a work in progress with me because you know, it's the, I think, I feel like this last conference, I did a better job of capturing what I wanted to capture, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Yeah, so, yeah. so let's talk about some of these strategies before we jump into the community. My question to you, before I go on to this whole old school binder thing <laughs> that you're going to laugh at me about, um, tell me how, if you read something on a blog post, and it's just something that you want to try or you're like, oh, I forgot I tried that before and it really worked and I don't want to forget to try it again. 
you're probably taking that link and putting it straight into Evernote or wherever like things, right? That's probably what you're doing. It's pretty straightforward, right? First of all, yeah. Evernote, I'll hit the little elephant on my Safari toolbar and it will save the entire page as a simplified no ads thing in Evernote. Then I take that Evernote link and I add, like if it's just a thing I need to try once, it'll be a things uh, task for whatever day I'm going to do it. If it's a repeating thing that it's a habit I want to try and, and do, I'll put that link in as a repeating task that'll happen every day, every other day, whatever frequency I need to try that thing. And uh, that'll become a part of my daily system. Mine is like that now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> It didn't always used to be, but it is now. So you'd be proud of me. But yes, definitely. If I see something online, I'm not printing it out. I'm not putting it into a binder or anything like that. I used to do that, but I don't do that now. Um, so I will usually like kind of just like you, if it's a current thing that I want to do immediately, it will go into to, to, into Todoist for me because that's where all my current projects are. Um, but if it's something that I just want to remember, like for research down the road, then it's going into Evernote and going into its own little category. Category. So that works really well. Where I'm still kind of old school are my conference notes because I'm still doing them by hand. Mm -hmm. And also the classes that I've taken um, to get certified as a coach. All of those are uh, handwritten. All of those are handwritten and, and are handouts. And I and I haven't taken the time to scan them, you know, to put them into the computer. And so they're in binders. Is that something that's important to you to like to digitize those at some point? Not really. Yeah. I'm fine with them being in a binder because I have a binder that's, you know, coaching resources that are very specific to coaching. And then I have an ADHD resources binder that is very specific to ADHD. Right. And, um, and so, no, I mean, it, it isn't important to me, so I probably won't do it. And like I was saying earlier, I purged all of the old information. So those binders aren't even really that big. Yeah. Um, but the stuff from the classes, and I'm sure people are going to relate to me on this. I just, I can't let go of, because even though I don't look at those things all the time, when I do, there's always these aha moments and like these relearning moments that you're like, oh, I could apply this to this client or I could do this for the podcast. And it's like, it always just generates inspiration when I do go back to it, that there is value there. Can't argue with that. Yeah, there you go. All right, now we can talk about the TCA community on Facebook. Excellent. Yes. So this first one, it cracks me up. The bullet journal. Yeah. Yeah, this was popular. Yeah. And I got to tell you, I mean, you know, the index is like everybody's favorite thing, including mine. Well, when you think about it, I mean, that's how I use Evernote, too. Like if there's a there's a, I create those table of contents notes and that becomes the index to, you know, projects and things like that. It's a perfect uh, parallel. Absolutely. So a couple of things that people said, um, if I'm in a pinch, it goes into notes on my phone, but a reminder calendar event for later is better. I get a ping to read an article or put some notes or quotes into my bullet journal. My journal is organized chaos. Love that. So I can just note the page number in the index to find it later, which I think is really the huge, you know, huge yeah. advantage of the index is that it doesn't matter. You can always find it later. Um, and then there was another comment that just said, bull, you know, bullet journal. Uh, another person said, in true ADHD fashion, I document info many ways. I have several notebooks where I have notes from webinars and podcasts. I also put reminders of things to read or to try on my phone and iPad. Um, again, this year, well, she doesn't say again, but I'm saying again, because we're bringing up the bullet journal. Yeah. Um, and she is determined to document information regarding ADHD. ADHD in it, and that uh, this will be easier to locate within the index. So I'm definitely seeing a trend with bullet journal and indexing, <laughs> which is which is nice. I think it's great. Uh, I, I still, I mean, I know I'm the one, I know. but I think once you reach the end of that page of that index and you turn the page and you're like, where do I go now? I'm out of paper. And then you hyper focus on stickies and inserting and uh, there is a point where the bullet journal is not going to scale. That's my, that's yeah. my, as somebody who has been a zealous pen and paper planner user for decades, it, it just doesn't, it, there's a point where it doesn't scale. 
So you again, you're going to have to um, check with my health bullet journal in March. Yes. Right. <laughs> I'll tell you how it's going. Right. So far, so good. But it's only been a couple weeks in. Um, Pinterest was also a couple of um, suggestions on Pinterest. The ADHD boards on, on Pinterest where they will repost things from my page. Thank you mm-hmm. very much. Um, and then also jot down little notes in Passion Planner um, or in my iPhone notes. So obviously we're seeing iPhone. Mm -hmm. right? As being a great tool to capture these things. Um, Pinterest again has an ADHD board uh, that they drop all their info in. Uh, Evernote user with the tag ADHD. Gotta love that. Love that. Uh, I'm, you know, Pete and I both have those with all kinds of ADHD things. It's not just ADHD. It's ADHD memory. It's ADHD time. It's all kinds of stuff. So um, Google Keep, what are your, what are your thoughts about Google Keep? Because there Uh, were a couple of yeah, no, yeah. it's it's Google's answer to it's 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 essentially Google Evernote. Okay. Google Note. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Google Note. Um, so there was a couple of people that 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 used that, um, and one of the comments came from Gabriel, who was a guest on our show, and I can't say the last name, but I know you can. Gabriel uh, Villarreal. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Yes. So he um, was kind enough to comment and talk about Google Keep was yeah. how he would look at things and then review to, to catch up. So my question to him was, how often do you think you go back and look at what you saved? And then I say, this is my biggest issue. I usually forget I save something and then I will come across it again and think, yes, hey, great idea. So well, this and the is- nice thing, like Evernote and like Evernote, Google Keep is also a it's a place where you can create, you know, checklists, tasks, notes and reminders for those notes. And so if it's something you're working on and you just want to dump it in there and say, hey, I need to every Friday at 8 a.m. I go through my the stuff that I've collected and I process it. You just remind yourself for, you know, Friday at eight and then you don't have to think about it for the rest of the week. You, you'll yes. think about it when it comes up for you. And that's a it's just a great best practice for, uh, uh, you know, for using reminders to yeah. help you integrate this stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, his his answer to my question, so my question is how often do you go back and, and look at what's saved? He says, it's usually in the back of my mind to review it. However, with everything I have going on, I rarely find something. Um, but if I'm stuck with a client, I'll review it and usually find some gems. The trick is to attach motivation externally. We ADHDers are huge empathizers. We can go above and beyond for others long before we do it for ourselves. And that's how I've been able to get out of bed every day at 430. Good for you. That's too early. For two, <laughs> for two years to work out. Um, and and the reason I put this in here is because I know for me personally, too, that's what's what's so awesome about going back to what you highlight and what you what you read. If you do take that, if you have that reminder, like you're talking about, and at the end of the week, you're looking at these things. It's amazing to me how when we take the time to learn, and when we take the time to grow, we always find something that all of a sudden makes sense in our world. And it it applies to a client or to the podcast or to somebody that you meet. It's like, oh, I just read this and now I can share it with you. But if we don't take that time to learn and grow, then we don't get those little nuggets to share, you know? Um, And so when I read his response, I thought it's just so true. It's like, we've got to take the time, you know, not when we're just struggling with a client or or whatever situation we're struggling with, but just to keep growing and keep learning because all of these things, whether you, you know, it doesn't matter how you organize them, they are making your life better. And that's, you know, that's the key. That's just, that just hit, hit me right in the feels. Nikki. I know, thank you. <laughs> that's, that's, that's Personal I'm so growth. Warm. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's what I've got. I love it. Today. I love it. This is good stuff. And I, you know, I didn't mention another that, that has come up, uh, a lot lately, you know, we're hearing more and more about the bullet journal. I'm also hearing more and more about Devon Think, and I, I've always looked at Devon Think as the, uh, uh, the like, uh, obnoxious big brother of uh, Evernote. Like, it's it's bigger, it's capable of more, it's stronger, it's but it's harder to use, and it kind of picks on you. Um, but I don't have the. It's like Chet. You remember Chet from? You don't remember oh, Chet from Weird Science? From Weird Science, yeah. Yes. Chet, Chet is Devin Think to the little brothers Evernote. See, I haven't heard of Devin Think. Well, it's it's. I think it's Mac only. It's another reason, but it's it, it's just it's like a massive institutional kind of research tool, uh, okay. and it doesn't have the comprehensive sort of syncing. But it's designed to live on your system and store and catalog every single thing that you do. It it is the 
uh, it, it's it's the industrial con the, the information industrial complex on your computer. And so I honestly, I don't have as much experience with Dev and think I've, I've played with it a little bit, but I certainly don't have enough to talk about. If anybody is a Dev and think user slash lover, uh, ping me and let me know. We'd, I'd love to learn some more about how you use it, how you use chat, uh, in your life. Uh, I know a lot of academics, you know, I teach at the university and I know a lot of my peers over there love Dev and think because of, you know, how it, it allows them to organize research that supports lesson plans and things like that. I, I've never, um, you know, invested that much to learn about it. So I'd be interested in learning more. There you go. Shout out. There you go. All right. This has been great. Thank you so much, Nikki Kinzer. I appreciate, uh, I appreciate your time and attention and everybody for uh, downloading and listening to this show and, you know, hanging out on the live stream. This is fun. I know, right? Hello. I mostly just like looking at you while we do this. Hello. We don't usually do that. <laughs> it's super fun. Uh, thanks everybody. We will, uh, we, do we know what we're talking about next week? We might as well tease it. Well, we are going to have a guest. Oh, and, I don't know I if have... we can do this live stream with a guest. That'll be fun to try. Linda Rogley is, is going to be joining us uh, next week. Hopefully we, she will be able to join us on the live stream part. Yes, hopefully. We're going to figure that out. It's going to be around women and ADHD. I just don't know the topic yet. And we are definitely going to be talking about the Palooza. Oh, the ADHD women's Palooza. The Palooza is there again that she hosts. And I'm going to be a guest speaker on at the Palooza. So um, that's fun. That's going to be fun. That's yeah. really fun. So uh, here's hoping we got we can keep all of our we got our ducks in a row this morning and we will keep them aligned perfectly for a live stream stream with Linda Rogley uh, next. Week. There you go. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for downloading, listening. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us in the live stream. Uh, we will catch you next week right here on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. <laughs> <laughs>